Hi, welcome along everyone. Today's little job is uh, one that can be a little bit tricky. It's the problem of combination boilers and that sealed system when you want to get inhibitor or system cleaner put into your central heating system and you're kind of a bit stuck as how you're going to do it. Anyway, look, I'll show you one of the ways that I do it if your radiator hasn't got the usual lugs to feed in the fluid. So what I'm going to do is show you those first and then how we're going to get around that problem. So here we have the end of a normal type of radiator in most people's houses or dwellings um, and you literally undo that plug there, well when you drain the system we do that first, don't forget everybody. <laughs> or if you're just putting a little bit of um, fluid in, a bit of top up uh, inhibitor then you only need to drain a little bit out, enough out this radiator uh, and you can tip it in. Now to that end I always use one of these, uh, this is the easy feel, makes life a lot easier. You can see it just screws in there, once that comes out you screw that in and just tip your inhibitor in there. I've got a video on how to do it, it's very easy uh, and I'll also give you the link if you want to buy one of these to make your life easier. I've got the Amazon link for it. Um, but okay, so that's very easy, but what do we do if we haven't got one of those and all our radiators have got these instead, which I'll show you now. Here now is some of the radiators that are fitted a lot and what have you got? You've got a bleed valve, yes, and you've got one up the other end, but there is no way of getting any inhibitor into these type of rads. Um, a lot of other rads do have just the end stop as shown in the video just now of the rad upstairs in the bathroom, uh, but it's sealed in and it doesn't unscrew. Again, it's just a bleed valve uh, and you can't get any inhibitor in to the system. So that's okay if we've got the one upstairs, we can undo the screw and pour it in using the eco fill. Um, but what are we gonna do when we've got these? So I'll tell you what I do. So if you drained your system right out, of course you could undo a radiator valve uh, and just pour it down the pipe into the system, but you still demands a little bit of plumbing knowledge and the confidence to do it and put it back. And plumbers obviously, we, we can do that, no problem for us. But I'm trying to think of you, the DIY plumber at home, uh, to make that easy for you. So as I say, if you drain the whole system out, you can still put your inhibitor this way in, or even if you've just drained a little bit out of the water just to drop the pressure and get it away from the boiler, enough, which is what I'm going to do now, you can just top a little bit up if you think you've lost a bit, uh, or you may have changed the radiator or done something, or had a little leak and you've lost some inhibitor, but you want to just top it up a bit, bring it back to strength, uh, then this is, say, the way that I think is the best way to do it. So first off, locate your drain valve. Mine handily is right here on your, this radiator. Yours could be anywhere in the system, usually on the lower level if you're in a two-story house. Uh, have a look for it, it's usually downstairs. In a bungalow, could be anywhere. <laughs> but you should find it somewhere. Okay, very handy for me that one there because if I take you up here, my combi is literally just there. So um, I've only got to drain a very small bit out. So, to open the drain valve, your pliers on and do the end screw here. Okay. Now say, if you're just adding a little bit of inhibitor in to top up, you don't need to drain too much. If you are draining the whole system, then drain it all. And um, when it's all finished, open all the air cocks and all the radiators. That will let the air into the system and empty the entire rock. You'll have nothing left. Can you hear it sucking there now? It's sucking the water out. Um, if you have a look at your pressure gauge, it should be dropping away right now. You can see there's mine there. And it's fell away to zero straight away because we're draining the water down. What I'm going to do now, as I say, is open the air cock on the rad. The other end on this one. And just let the air in. Right, so we've drained the system. Or took the amount out that you want to put your inhibitor in. Or it could even be system cleaner if you've got a bad blocked up system. Anyway, under the boiler, most boilers, these days, the modern ones that are feeding, will have a filling loop. This is it here, this little loop. Okay, the small pipe that that's connected to is the mains. Okay, we leave that one. Very important not to turn the mains one. Okay, that's the little thin 15mm pipe. Leave that in the off position. 
This one, no, is the one that connects to the return to the boiler, which connects to the heating. This one now, as it's drained, we should be able to undo. Now, what we do here, you could, these usually undo your fingers, funny enough, like this one. You can always put a little container under there, if you're unsure. But you can leave it off for now, pull it out, and there'll be a little bit of dead water in the end there, but don't worry about it. No problem, I haven't got any in there, so it's probably drained it down pretty much. Right. Um, now you've got a little container under there in case there's any water left there but I know there's not any because I've drained down below that radar. Now all we've got to do is turn that on. Oh it's still a touch there look. Just a tiny bit laying in the end of that pipe. But there now we've got an open end to get a hose on and get this inhibitor into our system. Now this is where the little hose pipe comes in handy. We're going to want a funnel like so to pour it into. Um, and a bit of hose. Now, generally a bit of hose will be a, a little bit too tight to get over that end of that valve. Um, you can warm the ends up and you may be able to expand it over or get a slightly wider hose, short bit, just to go over the end of that valve because if, if I show you, you'll see it won't quite go over. Um, there it is and it, it's just a bit too tight as you can see. I've made a special little bit up that fits it. So this here is my airlock hose, um, I use it to clear air out of systems. That one goes on one tap, that goes on the other side, uh, and I blow out air from blocked up systems. Um, but it also comes handy to go over that little valve to put these little rubbers over there um, that will fit nicely over the end of the little valve that we need to fill it into. Here we have our arrangement then, with the valve open, put a pipe on it, coming around here to here. I'll give a little funnel in the end, keep it higher than the fitting, it will pour in it nice and easily. Okay, if you're unsure about any leaks on that pipe where it goes on, you can do a Jubilee clip arrangement. I'll, I normally do a clip around that rubber and tie it on, but this is just to show you. I don't actually need to put anything in the system, although I've drained a very fraction out, just, just to show you guys how to do it. Right then, we should have this arrangement now. Your inhibitor in here and just to tip it straight into the funnel here. Pour it in and let it drop into the system. Very simple, easy way of doing it. Once it's in, you can then shut the valve back off and we'll start repressurizing the system once we put our loop back on. Take this off, there'll probably be a bit of water in there, hold your thumb over it and get it in the sink. That's it. Okay, so now it just remains to reconnect the hose. And it needs to be done finger tight if it's quite new, set for system like this. That's all it needs. And both valves off and we're ready now to start repressurizing. First thing though, make sure the drain valve is shut back off down below. And if you've opened any air valves at all to let the air in and let the water out on all the rads, if you've done a whole drain, you'll have done that. Make sure you shut every single air cock off before you start filling the loop. And by air valves, I mean these things here. Well, you've checked that your air cocks are all shut on the radiators, and you've checked that the drain valve is shut. You're ready to go now. So we turn that valve back on, the one you had on that you filled it through, and now we're going to turn the main on. Hear it going in. Just keep an eye on the pressure gauge. Mine won't have far to go because I didn't really empty much. So just keep an eye. When it gets to one and a half bars, Turn it off, that's the right setting. And also remember, if you've got lots of radiators to bleed out, every time you bleed the air out, the pressure will need recharging because that gauge will drop again as you bleed out. So I've left it there at a the minute, but now I've got to bleed that radiator that I've just drawn off because there'll be a bit of air in there now. And then go back to the gauge and just keep making sure it's up to one and a half bar. Or it's usually 1.2 to one and a half. Some people like a little bit less. Um, and then just shut that valve off there when you're done and uh, your system inhibitor is in. Well, that's it for me then. Trust the O's, always does the job, doesn't it? <laughs> I know some plumbers do it different ways. Uh, that's just my preferred way. There are other many ways of getting the inhibitor into a sealed system when you've got a combi like that, but that's the easiest kind of way of that. Disconnecting too many things is something you can do by just having a pair of pliers and just your fingers to undo the valve. Um, anyway, all my stuff, usual place, nowhere to go, Derrick and 33. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, bye bye.